Hey gang, welcome to Domino's Pizza. My name is John Kissinger and today I'm going to show you how to make a great tasting Domino's Pizza every time. But before we get started, I need to wash up, throw on a clean apron, so come on back and let's get started. So here we are at the dough table where all the magic happens. I've washed my hands, I've got a clean apron on, and we're ready to go. Almost. There's a few more things we need to have to be completely ready. The first thing is, we need a clean and sanitized dough scraper. We need some properly proofed dough within its shelf life. And, last but certainly not least, we need to make sure we have clean screens. Now I'm using the, the new quick disks today. If you don't have those and you're using regular pizza screens, make sure they're clean. You can turn to section 20 in your MRG for all the procedures on how to keep your screens clean. Another thing you need is clean ovens. You have to make sure that the fingers are clean, the belts are clean, and that the oven time and temperature settings are correct for your make and model of oven. So making a great Domino's pizza is a four-step process in order to get the pizza perfectly on that screen before we sauce it, top it, and load it in the oven. Step number one is removing the dough patty from the tray, keeping it nice and round. Step number two is forming that edge, a pencil-thin edge at the dough table so that when it rises in the oven, it's perfect three-quarter inch diameter coming out of the oven. The third step is making sure that you stretch that pizza to the size of the pizza screen. No bigger, no smaller. And the fourth step then is placing that stretch dough onto the pizza screen, keeping and preserving the shape and the characteristics that you created earlier in the process. All right, here we are, step one, removing the dough patty from the tray. First thing I have to do, obviously, is remove the cover tray from the dough patty get my scraper in hand. Now, I want to select the best dough patty in here to remove, the easiest one to remove, then it'll make getting the rest of them out even easier. I'm going to take this one because I think I can get access to it pretty easily. Now, this, the process I'm going to use to take the dough patty out of the tray is hopefully just two scrapes with the scraper, two strokes. So I'm going to go under, since I'm right-handed, under the left side of the dough patty first so I don't get all tangled up. Quick, flat stroke, and I use my hand just to keep it from sticking back down to the tray. Then I come through with my right stroke and into the cornmeal. So here's what to do if the dough patties are stuck to each other or stuck to the side of the tray. The first thing you need to do is take your dough scraper and come right in between those dough patties. And sometimes it might help to even separate them a little bit to make sure you know where those are cut. So just sort of slide it through. You can just one, two times, how much ever it takes. And the same thing on the side. You just get your scraper in there, make sure it's loose first, and then kind of slide it through to make sure you've gotten it free. Then, just like before, take the dough patty out of the tray. Right now, I'm going to show you what not to do when removing the dough from the tray. A mistake a lot of new pizza makers make is they go in and they start uh, scraping right into the center of the dough patty. The problem is that means the dough's still stuck here and it's still stuck here to the tray. So watch what happens when I do that. I scrape into the center and then as I pull up, you see it's still stuck down. In fact, it's stuck to this other dough ball here. And people in their haste to get that pizza made quickly will just sort of pull that out. And you can see when I get it in the cornmeal, it's all stretched out like a piece of taffy. <laughs> 